name as Eric Dorn. I often get a lot of critique for saying that INFJs and INFPs are actually quite similar. And I agree with uh, most of the criticism that yes, when you look at the cognitive functions, in particular the cognitive functions that arise from being a judging or perceiving type, uh, INFPs and INFJs are quite different. But if you look at how they come across and how they appear and their values, you'll find that they are more or less quite similar. As NFs, both share an idealistic stance on humanity, both have a peacemaking kind of uh, vibe, both are sensitive types, both are in many ways philosophical types. So uh, really the similarities are more than the differences and it's actually quite easy to understand how these two are confused. Now I want to go through a personality test by celebritytypes.com for if you are 9FJ or 9FP and I want to talk about the questions they ask and I want to give some feedback and some clarifications to help make it easier for you to tell them apart. Now here you tell in question one that for the INFJ it's about good manners where for the INFP it's about sincerity. Uh, but the reasoning here states that both value good manners and sincerity. The INFP values sincerity just slightly more than good manners. Or the INFP believes that sincerity is polite and well-mannered, where the INFJ man values that truth and honesty is polite and considerate. So the INFJ has a stance of sharing information that is empathetic. They share information and they think about how the other person will understand this information. So they are honest uh, from the extent that uh, they understand and they look at honesty from the other person's perspective. What does the other person need to understand? What uh, will the other person understand and what won't they understand? Where the INFP looks at uh, good manners from the question of uh, truth and honesty, like from uh, the individual perspective and from what is ethical and what is true, objectively speaking. What is uh, right and what is wrong with this situation and uh, how can I use this to help other people and to show consideration to others. Now, looking at question two, how do you think? Um, one states that there are differences in people's values, but in them we are all one. We all look for the same thing. And this is the kind of universality that feeling judging types tend to feel, a sense of universality where we all more or less agree and can agree if we all reflect on and see each other's point of view. The differences in view uh, to the INFJ are more a matter of nuance, where for the INFP it's said that of course people have some similarities, but at heart each person has a set of core values that are unique to them. So INFP emphasizes individual values, where the INFJ values universal values. People who want to organize everyone's business according to formal logical rules are generally in need of a helping hand. Logical Ru rules can be a great boon to an organization, but they need to be balanced with insight into the whole of human nature. Or, generally you do not see that they are trampling the enthusiasm and the unique contributions of others underfoot. And they should listen more to their subordinates. Now, here it's that uh, the INFJ once again empathizes with people and uh, wants uh, logical rules to be empathic and considerate to other people's needs. The INFJ doesn't ask other people what they need, uh, where the INFP does. The INFP emphasizes letting people speak out freely about what they think, where the INFJ emphasizes uh, sharing what uh, and trying to make decisions that are considerate to what you think other people need. Now, when I look at the scene of international politics, I see that good guys and bad guys. Um, so, here, of course no one is perfect, but in the end you can often see the strong guys bullying the weak. The weak guys don't even get the chance, and that's not right. Here you see the feeling perceiving types uh, concern for the small person, where the INFJ thinks on in different shades of grey. Yes, all countries are equally are not equally bad, but they're all driven by self-interest. The best way to get along is for all countries to agree to play by a common set of rules. So, looking here, basically, the INFJ looks in different shades of grey. They see, okay, 
there isn't, and they struggle to see contrast. Really, that's one of the issues being an INFJ: struggle to see contrast and struggle to see meaningful differences in opinion and in people's conflicts. Um, this uh, makes a difficulty when you want to get people to make a clear decision on something, or when you want to uh, create a clear conflict. INFJs really can't do that. They can only create uh, shaded conflict, where you look at nuances and we try to make a small unison for all of them. Now the INFP they have a much more grand worldview where there is an image, a story of a small person, uh, David rising against the Goliath or against uh, an individual who has been oppressed standing up against oppression. That's the worldview of the INFP where the worldview of the INFJ it's more like uh, different conflicts of interest and everyone needs the everyone universally wants the same thing but people are caught up in small conflicts and uh, people are just trying to protect themselves what better describes your personal ethics there are certain acts that i could never do simply because the acts themselves are so loathsome to me or there are certain acts that are wrongful, which be, which, but which can be justified in the service of an overall goal. Here is also where feeling judging types will look at the bigger ideology, and they will look at what's best for people overall, uh, where the INFP will look at what is right and wrong in each situation. So there are things the INFP will feel they cannot do. They will simply say, no, I won't do that. I won't get there. I won't uh, be a part of this, where the INFJ will say, if it is for the greater good, I will do it. So, an INFJ appreciates logic as a building block, a stepping stone to something greater. But by itself, it can never be more than a tool. tool. Uh, where the INFP says logic is mostly irrelevant to my interest, unless there is a direct application that pertains to my interest, it doesn't interest me. So here, uh, the thing about feeling perceiving is that I don't think INFPs have anything against logic at all. It is that it hardly matters to them. It's, uh, they don't need it. And there is a good reason why they don't need it. Because they already have a pre-programmed sense of logic, a sense of harmony, a sense of what's right and wrong. <laughs> that overarchs logic and that fills the purpose of logic without being a logical process. The INFP doesn't think in statements of either A and B than C, but they think in the sense of A in harmony with B produces C. So the reasoning process is different, but it's still a logical process. It's uh, bio their biology, their values, their history, and everything has been organized in careful symmetry. Everything has been put in harmony, and everything has become a strong compass, a strong ethical compass that can be used to even solve mathematical problems and to understand nature and people and all kinds of things around them. So this is why the INFP will say it's irrelevant. It's not because they don't... <laughs> have the ability to solve logical issues, but that they don't understand that process or they don't engage in it. Which better describes your attitude in the workplace? Well, if I have to criticize others, I prefer to sandwich the criticism between positive feedback for other tasks. Or, if I have to criticize others, I prefer to point, point out how their neglect has unfortunate consequences for others. So here, the way I see it, the INFJ is the person that will uh, try to balance criticism. And I saw that, but I think that was good. I didn't like that, but I thought that was great. So <laughs> it's like eating a sandwich with uh, uh, some uh, good uh, spreads and then some disgusting spreads, <laughs> making it easier to stomach. Um, where the INFP will uh, probably work more from the sense of don't you see how that will affect other people and don't you understand how that hurts me or that how that damages me so here I don't actually see a direct conflict between one and the other uh, I wish the statement would have uh, had a clearer conflict uh, but I see how uh, this relates more to me where the second option 
uh, is something I don't like to do. I don't like to guilt trip other people. And I, I know this is not exactly a guilt trip, but uh, it's just an accurate statement. But to me, it feels like uh, putting uh, people against people in a way that I don't like. Which better describes your attitude towards foreign countries? Are they exotic and uh, is it interesting to see how people live or is it that uh, yeah sure I do like foreign countries but I am not that uh, interested in adventure and I prefer to visit places where I've already been. So here I think they're getting at some kind of sensing versus intuition divide. Uh, but I don't exactly agree with the, the question in itself. Uh, I think I've met INFPs that love and I've traveled a lot and I've seen a lot and have great respect for cultures and uh, I think both would more or less agree with this one. Leaders should be driven by an inner vision about the overall good of the organization or strive to bring out the best in each and every subordinate. I like this question. This is a really interesting one. It makes me think about how my personal leadership style was. And uh, to be honest, uh, I actually almost relate more to the second option. Uh, I do think, if I was honest, I think today I lean more to the, option, the top option. But uh, I also see myself uh, fulfilling a mentor role where I counsel other people and where I support other people in becoming whatever they want to be in the organization. So I've filled both roles, to be honest, so it was a difficult one for me to tell apart. Do you over snack on sugar, fat, alcohol, tobacco or some or such? No. Uh, I really dislike this definition of extroverted sensing and what happens when you're in the grip of it. The truth is I do think anyone can fall into these issues. I've seen but INFJs and INFPs fall into this overindulging sense of sensing. My better definition is that an INFJ under the grip of sensing becomes restless, uh, high on adrenaline, tends to move around a lot recklessly, tends to make rash decisions and has a tendency to rush things, where the INFP uh, tends to become narrow-minded, nitpicky, they stop listening to you, they uh, pretty much uh, obsess, they uh, don't listen to you in a sense, they only hear themselves and what uh, they want to hear, and uh, they become kind of nitty and uh, tunnel visioned in a sense. Yeah, uh, the other option was that <laughs> Other people seem to be cut out for a 9-5 corporate zombie routine and it sometimes makes me feel like a space alien that I just don't fit in. Uh, I guess this is the INFP statement and this is the INFJ statement. But I didn't, don't agree with it so much. And I can... I would say this is more accurate for INFPs that fall in the Enneagram 4. Uh, pattern, but not all INFPs do. I've seen there are Enneagram 9 INFPs that won't agree with this or, or won't see this as their biggest problem. So they're careful with this one. Which better describes your outlook? Well, we must all try to fit in and pursue our goals and individuality from there, or nobody has the right to tell anybody else to fit in, and people should respect individuality more. Um, difficult one. Now, I agree feeling perceiving types are the people who stand up for the individuals and INFJs are the people that stand up for the group and the community. Uh, and I would say for, yes, the INFJ would pick this option and would from their own perspective. But the INFJ has a lot of respect for individuality in other people. Uh, we do not expect everyone to conform but we expect ourselves to do so. Uh, and to conform not with the group necessarily, we don't necessarily do what everyone else tells us to, but with what we think is best for the group and what we think is the best for our ideology. Uh, we, I have never told anyone else to do so, and I wouldn't. Which describes your view of empathy better? 
When empathizing with others, I tend to find that I can help them the most when I can identify the basic emotions involved and then clarify to them what they are feeling. When empathizing with others, I tend to find that I can help them the most if I surrender myself to completely to their inner experience without judging them or putting words in their mouths. I almost feel like when I've talked to INFPs, I felt like they've done this the most. Uh, they would uh, find themselves uh, uh, telling me how I feel and they would say, I sense that you're angry about this or you seem to be sad about this. Uh, where uh, me personally, I feel like it, this is the style that I've done the most. Now, I don't know actually if they believe that INFJs or INFPs do this more. It's hard for me to tell. Uh, but this is what I would say is the most true to INFJs. Uh, the non-judgmental non listening where we sit with another person and we simply be around them without judgment. Uh, I feel like INFPs have a personal relation style where when they listen they give personal relations to what they hear and they listen and offer personal feedback from their perspective of what they think is right and wrong where I try to be non-opinionated. Which statement is more in accordance with your view of ideas? I believe there is a finite amount of ideas going around which are being expressed in various ways. Each expression has a different nuance but at the end of the day they are the same ideas phrased differently. I believe that the amount of ideas going around is as numerous as the amount of people in the world. People's own experiences of what is important to them is too deep to be reduced to someone else's experience. Um, I do think INFJs would relate more with the top statement here because uh, we see everything as nuances and perspectives, we see everything as coming from different ways, but or I see everything relating to the same source, and I think that's from being an intuitive and judging type. I think that INFP uh, sees ideas much more nuanced, there are tons of ideas, ideas everywhere, uh, all kinds of ideas, and all ideas are unique. So uh, this is the kind of difference in how they see ideas, and I do think this is a good question. While I get along fine with adults, I can't help but find that society's expectations and routines have pressured them to become something that they're not. I find that children are less spoiled in this manner, and that gives me hope, versus children are less corrupted, but in the end I prefer adults because they have access to the full range of human emotion. Oh, wow, this is an interesting one. Uh, I believe I would lean more towards this option for myself. Yes, uh, children are. Uh, the children do give me a sense of hope. I always loved children in that sense. Like they always seem so clever and so pure in their understanding of the world. And I feel like adults have a less have a more corrupted understanding of the world. Uh, they they have corrupted and forsaken some of their base values and what they need, forgotten some of themselves. So. Uh, in that sense, I would say I prefer that more. I'm not sure which INFJs or INFPs would like more, uh, but I do think INF, most INFJs would prefer the statement. Uh, I think an INFP would struggle the most with children in the regard of uh, feeling that children uh, were immature or didn't had had a less corrupted. <laughs> I don't know. Had a less. I, I think they would emphasize a higher range of emotion. The kind of people that frustrate me the most are people who patronize me by letting me know how they think I ought to be, versus people who don't reciprocate common courtesies and are inattentive to others. Uh, I think an INFP would definitely say this one. Me personally, I would say this one. That's my nephew who wants food. Uh, what are your reading hats like? I tend to gravitate towards theory and nonfiction. Versus, I tend to gravitate towards fiction. I personally uh, like both so much. Okay, I tend to find myself thinking that a novel must also impart lessons that can be applied to the real world. Versus, I find that fiction is where it gets really exciting. <sighs> I guess I would pick this one, and I do think an INFP would prefer this one, and an INFJ would prefer this one, but I really think it's a matter of nuance. I really think it depends.
and I, I find myself depressed with the last statement. It should be applied to the real world. I mean, who cares? Uh, I learn something from everything I do. Everything has a lesson to teach you. It's all about what you like to learn, what you want to learn. I have the heart of a child versus I have the soul of a sage. Um, I think a sage and a child have a lot in common. I really do. I think uh, a sage has to be. And they look at like people like Yoda and like you look at the, the mentors of fiction. Like they are usually people that are very playful and know how to laugh and that see the absurdity of the world. So I hate putting these two against each other. So I really do. Well, sure, an INFJ should say this more, but an INFP should say they have a heart of a child, but. Um, I really think that's also because of our stereotypes of children and how children are supposed to be creative and artistic and innocent where uh, that's all for today I got the result INFJ sensitive empathic and insightful care deeply about people want to accommodate them on the one hand and having strong wishes that you desperately want to turn into reality on the other often preoccupied with mulling over your personal thoughts in your own head. Others are likely to describe you as tolerant, cautious, and appreciative, but also a bit remote and dreamy. Thoughtful and caring, you have a well-developed facility for putting yourself in another person's place and an instinctive understanding of how people work. Though you tend to spend considerable time fantasizing about how society could be improved, you typically refrain from arguing passionately in favor of your solutions. Instead, you prefer to influence others by gently letting them know how their individual contributions would be invaluable in the greater scheme of things. So yeah, I hope this video helped uh, you find out what type you are. And I want to end with one important remark. Sometimes people think they value something, but that they don't value. Sometimes think, people think they believe they are a kind of person that aren't that kind of person. Like Sometimes you've developed yourself to be a gentle and considerate person. Sometimes you've developed yourself into being a person that values the group a lot. And sometimes an INFP can go that way. It happens, actually. It actually does. Uh, and then what you will want to notice is how stressed you feel as you do so. How stressed you feel carrying the group expectations versus how stressed you feel being individualistic and focusing on your own needs, how motivated you feel or how open you feel being a certain type. If you are, if you believe you're an ISTJ because you're close-minded but not because you're open to sensing, well then you're gonna miss a lot. So take that into account and I hope this video helps you and thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.